After taking a look at Need for Speed Most Wanted a while ago, one common thread kept showing up. You should play Need for Speed Carbon. Why? Because it was a direct sequel to Most Wanted, a concept I completely forgot about because I never played the real version of this game, only the spin-off versions of Own the City for PSP and Wii. So I figured, hey, why not? Snagged a copy for pretty cheap and I set off on my racing adventure. On Carbon's surface, there's a lot to like if you're a fan of Most Wanted. The over-the-top story, and more importantly, the CGI cutscenes make a return, alongside Dean McKenzie's return as cop-turned-bounty hunter Jonathan Cross. Sit down! How you been? It's time to settle a little score from Rock. Most importantly of all, the tight controls and gameplay, and robust list of cars to unlock and drive make a return as well. The police chases somewhat return as well, albeit with a few caveats, but we'll get to that later. But after playing through the entire game, there were many different things holding me back from really loving this game as much as the other entries in the series like Most Wanted and Underground. But let's start with the story. You play as nameless, faceless driver who returns to Palmont City after leaving under very mysterious circumstances. A small cinematic showing the evening playing out greets you when you start the game. You line up at the starting line where a girl who's really excited to show off her new lunchbox stands in your way. At the end of the race, the cops appear and force lightning every car but yours, coincidentally. The girl chucks her precious lunch consisting of a tuna on white bread with no crust into your car, the true prize of the evening that must be kept safe. You escape through an alleyway and make your escape to Rockport, but upon opening the box there is no tuna sandwich, there's only tax forms. Now where have I seen a decoy bag lead to a wonderful adventure before? Okay dude, the bridge is coming up. Give me the ringer, chop chop. Fuck that, Walter. I love you, but sooner or later you're gonna have to face the fact you're a goddamn moron. Okay dude, no time to argue. Hey man! The bridge. Hey! Walter! Hey! Walter! Hey! Walter! Here goes the ringer! Upon returning to Palmont, you are greeted by Cross, and your car, the same one you spent the entire game trying to get back and most wanted, it's totaled immediately. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Abandoned on the side of the road, you are picked up by your former girlfriend Nikki who hates you after what happened last time you saw each other and oh hey Watch Dogs is in this game. Damien is the new leader of Palmont City and he welcomes you back with arms as open as an Iron Maiden. Most Wanted caught a lot of flack for Mia obviously being a cop well before the big reveal which was the main twist of the story. But it's so blatantly obvious that Damien sucks, they might as well have tattooed it on his stupid face. He explains to you that times have changed considerably, and Palmont is different now. Rival teams have to compete for turf, and for you to get respect back, you need to build your own team and start taking back turf. This happens through races, sprints, speed traps, drifts, and checkpoint races. Drifting replaced drag races, and they're a lot of fun, there just simply aren't enough of them. As you do, different crew members who join you will fill in a few of the gaps from the night you left. Carbon uses the same CGI style that Most Wanted did, but also adds cutaways of 3D models of other drivers. They're super awkward and weird and mostly end up looking like other drivers, look like Pennywise the Clown unhinging his jaw to eat a kid. The story also opens up the main addition to the gameplay to you, the team members. You have to build your very own street racing team and assemble a brand for yourself. I made my team the tire fires because there's nothing more degrading than being beaten by fiery trash. Team members are broken up into three different categories, drafters, blockers, and scouts. By the end of the game you assemble the all-star cast of Not Mia from Most Wanted, Jimmy from Grand Theft Auto V, Phoebe's awkward brother from Friends, The Porcelain King, and a few other people I can't be bothered to remember. Here's the problem with team members though. They're either useless or they don't work. Allow me to explain my unending frustrations about this. Drafters allow you to slipstream behind them and gain speed to slingshot past. Fine, I never found a speed boost necessary, but fine. Scouts drive ahead and find shortcuts for you. Hey pal, instead of just driving around looking for shortcuts, uh, go win the race. Plus, the way the circuits are laid out, you'll likely trip and fall into a shortcut anyway. It's totally useless. Blockers are the only team members I ever used, and I can count on a single hand the times they actually worked as intended. 
Essentially, these team members are the bruisers, the ones who will wreck their cars trying to knock out opponents. You essentially target an opponent and the blocker is supposed to take them down. However, if your teammate is behind you, he's usually too far away to catch up and knock out the opponent that you're aiming at, and even if he is next to an opponent, it barely works. It's such a good idea, but it doesn't work at all. Additionally, you can't take out opponents nearly as effectively as blockers, which blows. I don't care how my car looks either, but blocking an opponent feels like driving into a concrete wall. They don't move. It sucks. One place these blockers would have been really helpful would be during pursuits, but they kind of just take off. If I have to hear, I can handle these fools, I'll catch you later, I'm gonna scream. I don't care. Help me. Taking down enough turf lands you with a date of one of three leaders of the main cruise, where you challenge them to a city race and then what's called a canyon run, which is brand new to the series. The canyon run is an event where each driver has the challenge of sticking as close to the other driver as possible without hitting them, earning points for distance. If a driver passes the other for more than five seconds, game over. If someone falls off the side of a mountain, game over as well. They're a cool novelty at first, but I would have rathered a first to the bottom kind of race instead of this funky event. Like, how would you even judge this in real life? Each team leader represents a different class of car. See, Carbon's most interesting addition is variation between car classes. There's three different types. Tuner, Muscle, and Exotic. The differences in the way these cars drive is pretty dramatic. Honestly, I didn't use any Exotics for a reason I will get to in just a minute, but after playing through other entries where you get supercars really early on, I kind of felt like I wanted to see what else the game had to offer. Tuners are a bit slower, but they grip the track incredibly well. They're a ton of fun to drive and probably the most balanced class in the game. Muscle cars I saved for last because oh my god are these things wild. If you ever wanted to tear ass through a city after dark in some classic American muscle, this game is for you. I only wish drag races would have returned because these cars would have been a blast in those. These cars have all power and no handling. It's just slipping and sliding everywhere, getting massive air on every single jump. But if you can harness their power and use it to your advantage, you can just shred through the game no problem. And this is where the real issue lies with Need for Speed Carbon for me. This game is simply too easy, and I mean a walk in the park. For an entire two-thirds of the game, I used an unmodified base stats dodge challenger. I was slaughtering opponents, no nitrous or anything. I have about 10 hours of footage in my entire playthrough, and after looking up the average speedrun time to be around 8-ish hours, I was shocked to find that had I not spent an undisclosed amount of time trying to make an RX-7 look like Han's car from Tokyo Drift, I would have been in speedrun territory. I've never had that happen before, and it turned out to be time wasted. Does this even look like Han's car? <laughs> Technically, there are three different endings based off of each class. It affects the story in no way, but you unlock different cars for your troubles depending on which car you choose for the final showdown. And while the rewards are good, the game is over, so I can't really use them anyway. Even with how quickly I plowed through the game, there was still significant padding through turf challenges and pursuits. Once you start taking over turf, other teams will try to steal your turf away from you by challenging you to a race. While it's cool in theory, the random number generator that picks these different areas under attack kept choosing the same races over and over and over until I gave up and just let them take them. Losing a challenge doesn't mean you lose an area either, so if you only lose one event and you have a majority of the area still, it's still yours. These started to get pretty grindy because you don't even make money on these. To me, if you're challenging my turf, you better pay up when I whip you by 13 seconds. The core pursuit mechanics of Most Wanted return, but in Most Wanted, pursuits were awesome. They helped you build your reputation and move up the blacklist. In Carbon, they serve no purpose besides being a minor inconvenience unless you want to unlock bonus cars. I never felt in danger of being busted a single time. Besides the one time this taxi tried to be a hero and, well, Look how that ended up for him. So instead of being a core part of the game, pursuits just slow you down. I spent hours in Most Wanted just doing pursuits. In Carbon, I didn't spend more than 20 minutes in them. It's a huge bummer. But once you beat all three team leaders, yes, we're still talking about story, Damien turns you into Cross and comes clean about being the one who truly took the bright red bag of money that you predicted from the moment you saw him the first time. It just ends with a thudding, okay. 
After Nikki bails you out and promises to pay Cross for you, you face the three team leaders in a street race and then a final canyon race after that. These are less of a challenge than they are a time trial against yourself, because I demolished these people. They weren't even close enough to eat my dust. Then you have your final showdown with Damien to finally see who is the best driver once and... Oh, it's, it's over. Damien drives away, never to be seen or heard from again. Kind of fitting because the entirety of Need for Speed Carbon was never heard from or seen again. And while yes, this does sound harsh, it's not that far away from the truth. And with as much fun as I poke at it, I did have a lot of fun with it. It's Need for Speed, after all, and it's a pretty decent one at that. But the cards were stacked against it from the beginning. Most Wanted is still so highly regarded, and being the sequel to such a beloved game adds so much more pressure to be great as well. But further dooming the game was EA demanding a yearly Need for Speed release and rushing this game out the door. That certainly didn't help. Carbon had a lot of new ideas that just didn't get enough time in the oven leading to an entire main crew being cut from the game and AI opponents being totally removed from drift events. In a vacuum, Need for Speed Carbon is a fine entry in the series, but we don't live in a vacuum. Had it not been preceded by one of the more well-beloved games in the series, or at least had longer to flesh out ideas, maybe we wouldn't be thinking so lowly of it. While I think it could have used a lot more balancing, it's fun enough to play, you just might want to spend your time elsewhere. So that's going to do it for Need for Speed Carbon. It's a fun enough game, but it just really doesn't live up to the legacy of Need for Speed Most Wanted. It's fine enough if you never played it before, you might want to check it out, but it's not a must play, it's just kind of a game forgotten to time, and for a lot of people, they'll be okay with that. But until next time, I've been under 10 hours. If you like this video, please leave a like on it. If you like this video so much that you can't bear the thought of missing another one, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. Lastly, let me know what you think of this game. I always love hearing what people have reached out and said to me about these games, whether they agree or disagree. I just like hearing this, and I like the discussions behind it, so please, please, please leave a comment and talk to me about this game. Um, maybe I got something wrong. Maybe you love this game and you can tell me why. Cool. Let me know in the comments. But I'll see you all next video. Thank you so much for watching. I love doing this, and I'm so happy when people reach out. See you later.